Welcome. My name is Pearl Foy, and I want to welcome you to Haircutting A to Z. This is, a, is an educational program to teach you haircutting. We're not just going to, we don't want to just show you how to cut, we want to teach you how to cut. And it literally will be A to Z. When you're finished with this class, and it is a classroom environment, you're going to learn 26 haircuts. And everything that happens with them, the whys or why nots, and the possibilities. But the first thing you're going to learn is the map, the road map to the head. The road map to where you're supposed to be. But before I get started, please let me introduce myself. Again, I'm Pearl Foy. I've been doing hair for 52 years. It's been an incredible industry. It has been an industry that I, I can't even explain the fulfillment that you get from it. I can't even explain, especially in teaching it, uh, it, it has just been an, an amazing experience for me. So uh, using this now with, uh, this is two, uh, 2020 and uh, the year 2020, to, uh, 2020, uh, we've had a pandemic, we've had the uh, uh, COVID, COVID-19, and a lot of places had to close down. This is gonna go down in the history books. Uh, it's just, it's amazing. And uh, one of the things that's affected a lot of people is actually going to the salon. So this is where we got this idea because I, I could see some people out there. I could see where some haircuts have been done. I'm sorry, I need to set my timer real quick. There you go. Uh, I can see where people are cutting hair and really kind of on guesswork. So what I wanna teach you, and I wanna teach you, I don't want to show you. <clears throat> There's a lot of videos that you're gonna see that they show you how to do a haircut. But um, within the 52 years, let me go back to that, I'm sorry. I'm not just standing here trying to feed you stuff. I wanna tell you that I'm very qualified for this. Doing hair for 52 years, teaching for 32 years within that 52 years, doing work for companies, major organizations, uh, professional supply companies uh, that have, you know, we done platform work. That's when somebody stands up and they teach stylists how to do stuff. So what I'm trying to give you is what I have. And I'm hoping that you receive it. Now, I will tell you, you will be getting homework in this. And my recommendation, I am a teacher, is to take notes. So I'm going to let you, if you want to pause right now and possibly get a pen and paper. And so you can write down because we are going to be taking notes. You are going to be writing down. If you go to your friend's house and she's going to bake a cake and she says, come over, you really love this cake that I baked. And you go over there and you watch her put it together. You just watched her put it together. Can you go home and bake the same cake? That's what recipes are for. The recipe that I'm going to give you is how to cut hair. I want here to teach you, not show you. I want to teach you. And I hope that you, that it works well for you. So if you want to pause this for a minute, go get pen and paper come back and then we're going to get started. Okay, so I'm assuming that you've gotten your pen and paper and we're going to get started on this. Normally when people look at a head form, they don't see this. They see this. It's got hair on it. You can't see. It's like a doctor. You can't see a surgeon. They see the inside of your body. We see the inside of the hair and where it's at and where it's coming from. And this is the most important thing in haircutting is to know where you're at and to know where you're going. And you're gonna hear that phrase many, many times as I teach these classes. So the first thing I wanna teach you, <clears throat> excuse me, is how to diagram. In the diagramming, you're gonna write down the instructions for every haircut. You're gonna diagram the haircuts. You're gonna look at it and you're gonna say, okay, this is how I learned to do it. I could, I could make sure you get my diagrams, but my diagrams are not gonna help you. I will post them, I will put them up here when we do every haircut. You'll see the diagrams that I put together and I'll talk about them and then I'll do it on a mannequin. All work is gonna be done on mannequins, by the way. Um, but what I want you to get is how do you write your own diagram? How do you write down your own so that you understand what you're doing? I already know what I'm doing. I want you to get that information to know what you're doing. So the first thing you wanna do, let's put this back up. We took it down for a minute because we had to pause, 
is you want to learn how to make a diagram. So your step number one is to draw a question mark. That's your first step. Sorry, excuse my back. We have our fan on in here, so it makes it a little bit difficult. Does this look familiar? The question mark. Do you see what I'm saying? That's your profile, the question mark. And then you're going to put a number one, and then you're going to place a number two inside that question mark. So this is your hairline right there. Within that, I want you to put the ear in. The ear is going to have a lot of avenues for you, points of measure. It's going to have many things that are going to determine what you're going to do. So as we go on, you'll find out a little bit more about the ear. So let me take this down. So when we do, we've already got our question mark, our number one and number two, do you see this line right here? This line coming down identifies the sides. The sides of your head right here, before you get to the back of it, is called the temporal area. However, we identify it as the flat part of the head. Put your hand on it, is it round? No, it's extremely flat. And another thing that I want you to notice is look at the amount of hair that's there. There's very little hair in that area, but that is an area that people want volume and they want movement. So you knowing how to take care of that as we progress is gonna help. This line on top is called the parietal line. Pair of eyes, parietal, and it's tall. Pair eye tall, that's how you remember that. So it's on both sides. Travels around the head form. All right, how do you find the parietal line? The easiest way to find it, the simplest way to find it, is to take your comb on your hairline, and there it is. Take the comb on my hairline, and there it is. Do you see that? So that is your parietal line. Years ago, they used to call it a horseshoe, because it kind of looked like the horseshoe or the horseshoe shaping. Um, some people, when they're doing a haircut, they're gonna tell you the crest, the, the, the crest or the curve of the head. But realistically, let's say when we get into clipper cutting, and I never showed this to you. I'm just showing you cuts, showing you cuts, showing you cuts. And then we get into the area of clipper cutting. And then I say, okay, take it to the curve of the head. How far does the curve of the head go? Curve of the head. So you and I would not be speaking the same language. At the parietal line, there's an upper ridge and a lower ridge. Off the parietal line, how you find that is where the comb leaves the head, that's the upper ridge. Where the comb leaves the head, you see that lower ridge. I hope you can see it. So now, your homework is, everywhere you go, the grocery store, when you go to church, look at your husband, look at your kids, look at the neighbor, uh, don't let, and tell your husband what you're doing. I don't want to cause any problems. But uh, you're gonna put, look at the guys and they're really short haircuts and what I want you to look for is that lower ridge. Then you and I, after that, have a common language. You know that the lower ridge is where the comb leaves the head. And you will see that all the way around. Once you understand that, as we progress, the clipper cutting is the last thing we're gonna do. Well, it's the, like the last five haircuts that we're gonna do. Um, you're going to get 26 haircuts out of this class. So after this class, you want to go to section A to learn the first long-haired haircut that we're going to do. But anyways, so upper ridge, lower ridge, parietal line. It's right there. Upper ridge, lower ridge, parietal line. Flat part of the head. And then we have the occipital area. The occipital area is where you have the most amount of hair. That's where it's all at. It's, that's the biggest, biggest portion, the biggest part of your head, and that's the most amount. Now, just underneath the occipital area is something called the nape, or the nape line. Many times when I have my students do this haircut, any particular haircuts, I tell them, give me a happy face. 
and they learn to feel it. How do you find the parietal line though? But if you look at it, I'm gonna place my finger here. It's just gonna go right to that parietal line. I don't have to measure it, I just place my finger and it rides that parietal line. How do you find it on your head? Take your index finger, place it at the top of the ear, right here just as I did, and press. Just press, press and press, and don't direct it. It will go back by itself. It's gonna end up at your center nape, and that's where your knowledge bone is at. You're gonna feel that, it's right there. The thing about the nape line is many older gentlemen, that haircut will be coming back. It's called a taper. That's where tapering starts. That's where fades start. They start from the bottom and go up. Now within the nape, you have two little sections. Again, let me bring my little mannequin out here. Two sections on each side. Do you, do you know what that's for? Do you know why we section those out? Does anybody have any idea? Some of you might. The reason that we need to know that within the nape is um, because everybody's a little bit different. You may grow up right here and down on the other side, or you may grow up on both sides, or you may grow down on both sides. The biggest problem is, after you've taken this class, and I would have never said this to you, and you did a straight haircut straight across, and the lady goes home and she tries to do her own hair, if this is popping up, it's gonna pull that hair up a little bit. It's going to not look even. There's things that you can do, and we're gonna cover that when we do that haircut. But the point is, sometimes you have to tell the client, because of your hair growth, we may have to make some changes in your haircut or make them aware of it. I'm not gonna tell you what we're gonna do with it right now, but know that, that's why these areas are here and they're called, strangely enough, behind the ear. Just behind the ear. It's within the nape area. So know that. So we're gonna travel on up the apex. The apex is the highest part of the head. Right here, it looks like a goose egg. That's what uh, models years ago used to put books on their head so that they walked perfectly straight and the book couldn't fall. That's the highest part of the head. Balance, that was well balanced. But anyways, that is where the upper ridge ends also on a normal head form. The frontal area or bang, frontal fringe or bang. And like I said, when I do these cuts, these are the terms I'm going to use. I will remind as I do these cuts, if you don't understand these terms, you'll hear me say it over and over again, please go to section A1. And then A is the first haircut. Many people, when they cut the bang, they take it straight across, bring it straight down, and then they wonder why these little sides don't work. Why are they flipping out? Why do we have these little short pieces? You're supposed to pie shape it and it will fall naturally and you're not gonna have that problem with those little short pieces off to the side. So keep that in mind. Frontal fringe or bang, apex. And on the very back, we have something called the vertex. The vertex, uh, one of the thing about the vertex, it's the very center of the back it's just slightly above the parietal line at the center back. It's inside the crown. I don't have the crown on these. Oh yeah, I do, it's right there. But I didn't list it. But anyways, it's inside the crown. This is the occipital where you have the most hair. Inside the crown is the vertex. One thing behind the ear comes in to about an inch to an inch and a half. Notice that, that's some more homework for you. People with short hair, see how far that grows in, and you're gonna see that it's within an inch to an inch and a half. That area there comes straight up. The perfect thing on that is when students learn perm wrapping, if they know exactly where the vertex is at, they've got the exact location to put that perm wrap coming straight down. However, this does do a haircut for you without measuring, without standing there, hoping that you get it right. Once we get into clipper work, I'll be doing one and I'm gonna give you the name of it in a minute, but you're gonna come up. Some of you have probably already got it. Come up to the vertex, come up to the apex, 
and come straight down, shave everything else off. What haircut is that? It's the mohawk. Many times in the salon, when somebody wanted a mohawk, they would just send them over to my chair and I would just crank it right out and they'd look at me like, how did she do that so fast? It was because I knew where I was at and I knew where I was going. The variable here at the vertex that you're gonna have, especially if the hair's really short, and some people do have a problem with it, is cowlicks. Just like the cowlicks down here. You know, their mama took them to the farm and the cow licked them. That's not true, but you know that. That's just hair growth, it's a hair growth pattern. Some people actually have them at, up in the front. It just, these are the variables. And clients come in and say, but I don't want it to do that. Well, sometimes you have to say, it's not me, it's you. But there are remedies. There are things you can do to help them that other people aren't aware of. And that's what I'm here to teach you, not show you. All right, so you've got the different areas of the head form. Within the crown is the vertex. Behind the ear, center nape. And let's talk about the tragus a little bit. The tragus is a point of measure. The tragus is a really, really important area of the face and the head form. I want you to take your index fingers, both index fingers, place them just above the ear, right there. Right there, where I guess where your sideburn is or your temple area. But, you know, pretty close to the the ear itself, right there. And what I want you to do on both sides, I want you to take it, just press gently, press gently, and smooth it down. Just slowly smooth it down. Don't hurt yourself, don't hurt yourself. And then once you get down to the jaw, come back up in short, circular motions. Make sure that your fingers are flat so your fingernails don't scratch your skin. Press gently again, bring it down. Do you feel relaxed? Do you feel calm? Did it get rid of that slight headache? There are a ton of nerve endings at the tragus that come into the facial structure. How immediately it relaxed you. It bothers me when I see people putting an ear piercing right there because they're disrupting those nerves. There's a lot of nerves in your ears alone, the back of the ear, the ear lobe. But basically the tragus, when you put an earring there, you're affecting many areas of the face. So please be very, be aware of that, be careful about that, and maybe choose not to do that. If you did, it's too late. All right, so I'm going to bring this down. And uh, normally we see the profile as we teach. But normally what we see is the front of the face and the back of the head. Very seldom do we look at somebody's profile. You know, the things that we learn in cosmetology are only second to the medical field. Uh, there's so many things uh, as far as disinfection, skin structure, all of that that you learn. And it is absolutely amazing uh, the information that you can get, the knowledge that you can get from it. Uh, yet it's, it's downgraded quite a bit, and I really wish it wasn't because it is an incredible, incredible industry. Uh, there's business, there's accounting, there's so many things involved in it. There's marketing. Uh, all of those other careers that are in one area that are never really introduced, and I wish they were. Okay, so she's kind of happy, but you can see that along the face, along the hairline, that's called the perimeter line. All those little dots you saw inside our mannequin, that's the hair growing out of it. Now, do you realize that there's 1,000 to 1,500 hairs, individual hairs, strands per square inch of your head? It all depends on whether your hair is, um, your hair texture is thin, uh, the density of it, how, uh, how, how many hairs on your head that you have. All of those are different factors that determine that. So this again shows all the different areas and what they are. And this is the interior. So when I'm talking to you, many times I'm gonna mention, like I said, these terms. I'm hoping that you have been writing them down. Occipital, O-C-C-I-P-I-T-A-L, occipital area. Parietal, P-E-R-I-T-I-A-L, parietal 
area, or you can call it the parietal line. You know the upper and the lower ridge. The apex is right on top. Behind the ear, you should be able to get that. The tragus, T-R-A-G-U-S. Um, and then, of course, you know, the anterior. Knowing all these different factors is so extreme and so important uh, to knowing where you're at and where you're going, when you're going to do hair or cut hair. Uh, the little fan is really working, so let me get this. There, I locked it in there. Get this one. All right. I'm just going to put that right there. So where are we? This is the profile. This is what we look at. Uh, and we will be, by the way, within the cutting, as we talk uh, on certain cuts, we will be talking about profile. We will be talking about certain areas about a profile and how you would choose a particular cut or what you should do. So lines and angles, a lot of geometry. There you go, now we have math. A lot of geometry that goes into hair cutting. The one thing, if you don't know where you're at, you don't know where you're going. If you don't know exactly what direction you need to take it, you won't know what to, to, uh, direction to take it back to or the result of that choice. When a doctor takes out your appendix, he knows for a fact that your appendix is four inches to the right of your navel. If he didn't know that, how could he take out your appendix successfully and not distort another part of your body? Now, we have the frontal fringe or vein, the apex. We have the, let me do it in order, uh, upper ridge, parietal line, lower ridge, flat part of the head, behind the ear, the nape, that's all within that area, the occipital, so much bigger, the vertex, the crown, interior, perimeter line, and tragus. Those are all parts of the head, all areas that we're gonna work on, all areas that as we section the hair, as we cut the hair, when we move from one to the other, that you're going to learn within this class. This is not just a show me, this is a teach me class. Teaching hair cutting from A to Z. You will learn how to do 26 haircuts and the whys and why nots that you'll get from it and the variables. So keep in touch with us. Check into the next program, which is Haircutting A to Z, A, and everyone is gonna be labeled A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, X, Y, Z. So <laughs> every one of them. The clipper cutting is gonna come in the end, and that's where these terms are gonna be used a whole lot. So I'm hoping that by that time, we will have a very good communicating skill built up. So I'll see you in our section A. Take care. Have a great day.